Let's give God some praise. Thank you guys for being here. Awesome. You know, as we're praising God, this is what we're saying. We're, we're thanking God. And many of us are super thankful for what God has done in our lives because we know who we were before Jesus intervened. And, and there's some things like this song is saying that you can't break. You can't break the hold on, on your life sometimes in your mind. A stronghold is a thought that's overpowering you. And, and some of us, are, there's a thought that could have been the past, past hurt. It could have been a failure, something you did. And you said, I can't forgive myself for that. Or it could be a struggle you're going through right now. Or a thought habit that's turned into an overpowering torment. And it could be depression, anxiety, tormented thoughts, hearing voices, or an emotional response. I keep responding in this unhealthy way, anger. I say things I shouldn't say. I start hurting people. Man, this has to break. But I got good news for you. No matter what cycle you're in, it could be cycles of self-destructive relationships. It seems like you always end up being abused. You always end up being rejected. It's time to, for you to recognize, I can't fix me. But there's a God that can fix me. And if I'll call on him, whoever, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, they will be saved. And, and I love, it's, it's whoever. I, I love that. It's not some special group. And, and I think sometimes there's a misconception like, you know, church is for goody two-shoes people. You're wrong. Like, church is for a whole bunch of, like, gangsters. Let's get <laughs> I mean, we messed up. Like, we, we made some mistakes. We need some help. Is there anybody who said, I made some mistakes. I need some help. And Jesus came for us. I've heard people say, man, I'm not going to church because if I go to church, the walls are going to come down because I'm so evil. You know? But the truth is, Jesus came for sinners like you and me. And it, there's not an addiction that Jesus can't help you overcome. Come on. There's not a sin that he can't forgive you of. Come on. It, it, no matter where you're at. If you're a sinner, you qualify for Jesus. He loves you. And what a great way to start off your year. And start off is a good word, but finishing is even a better word. So what you want to do is develop some consistency in your life. And don't expect to be successful in, cons in inconsistent places. Uh, and consistency starts with commitment. Say it with me. Consistency starts with commitment. Until you make big commitments, you'll never get big results. There has to be a time in your life that I'm ready to make some commitments. And, and one of the commitments is what you're doing today. But don't just start this thing. Let's go Sunday to Sunday to Sunday to Sunday to Sunday. And let's have a year like we've never had. And be consistent in one thing. Serving God and coming to church, reading your Bible and growing spiritually. I pray that you do that. And wherever you're at, you know, wherever you're at, start where you're at. Start where you're at. You know, we're all starting. We all need growth. There's nobody here that's perfect. And we're all growing every single day. And that's what it's all about. We come to together. This is a rally. It's a time of celebration, what God has done. But also it's a time of new beginnings and new commitments. And what we're going to be talking about today is giving. And, and, and this is the reality about giving. We're most like God when we're givers. Uh, given is a, the, if you say, what's the verb of love? What's the action of love given? The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. You know, so he's saying, you, you give to who you love. And that's what Christmas is all about, right? We give and it's reminding ourselves of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and that we give presents to one another because we're acting most like God. Some of you guys love Christmas season. You love the feeling of it. It's, it feels like, oh, I love it. And I'll tell you why, because in the end, we're celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he was the ultimate giver. He gave his life. And no greater love has one man for another than to give his life. So we're going to talk about giving a little bit, but we're also going to talk about the blessings of giving. Um, prayer is important. Uh, like we're fasting right now. That's really important. And the third thing that's really important is giving. And, and there's a reward for giving. And I want to talk a little bit about what giving's all about, a first fruit offering. What's that about? And at the end, I pray you have more faith to understand what you're doing and then that God will get you to a place that you can activate some blessings upon your life. How many want the maxed out blessing life? I mean, you want the max. I want to bless. I want to be blessed to the max. So I think if I didn't teach about this, 
um, at the end of your life, you say, Pastor, how come you didn't tell me about the first fruit offering? How come you didn't tell me about this offering, man? You, you stopped me from being blessed. I'm going to tell you all of it, and then you could decide. No one has to give. No one has to obey. You don't have to do nothing. But I guarantee you this, if you don't do what God tells you to do, you're not going to be blessed like God wants to bless you. How many understand that? You're right. So let's get this together. And, um, and everything good comes from God. Everything bad comes from the devil and you. And you know why I say that? Because some of us are blaming God for our bad decisions. God, he said, no, it's you, not me. Look yourself in the mirror. You made that decision. I didn't make it for you. And the idea, let's start making some good decisions, being led by the Spirit, and let's start seeing God take us, lead us to the best life you've ever had. How many believe serving God is the best life you could ever have? It can get better. It can get better. Okay? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this time that we have to study the Word, and we thank you for everyone that's online and from all our campuses in Pomona, in Arizona, and in, in Tijuana, in, in Kenya, in Uganda, in Oregon, Father, our Arrowhead campus, Lord, and the hundred and plus churches over there in Uganda, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. And if everybody's just turn, tuning in, there's an online church. They're, they're out there, Father. They're far away and they can't drive here, but they, they're on with us. And we thank you, Lord, for every one of them. Help us to understand your word today and then have the strength to apply to get your results. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's talk a little bit about, we're just going to cover like three, three sections here. What does God say about giving? Um, what is a first fruit offering? And what are three major blessings that are activated through giving our first fruit offering? So let's talk about what, what God says about giving. And it's simple. Number one, giving blesses us and others. So when we give, it blesses us and it blesses others. Uh, in Acts 20, 35 uh, it says this, in everything I showed you by example, by working hard, in this way you must help the weak and remember the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we should help the weak. And he's saying, but these words, helping the weak and helping the poor, didn't come from just anybody. It came from Jesus Christ. He, what he's saying is, yes, you should get help, but after you get help, you should go ahead and pass on the favor to somebody else. When you want help, uh, you want the world to stop to get it for you. And praise God, there's people that will do everything they can to help you. But this is what the Bible says. is as, uh, as freely as you've received, freely give. That means when you get a breakthrough, is your breakthrough is not just for you. It's your breakthrough is supposed to be passed on to somebody else. I understand that. So Jesus said this. This is what he said. Um, that he, 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 Jesus himself said, it is more blessed and brings greater joy to give than to receive. So the, the receiver has joy. There's no doubt about it. He is so grateful that, that his need was met by a giver. But the Bible says that the one that's actually receiving gets joy, but the one that's given gets greater joy. This is what I've learned about givers. They all have the same attitude and they have the same perspective. They're happy and they're full of joy. A given has a way of healing you and making you emotionally healthy. You want to be unhealthy, be selfish, um, saying I, everything's mine and that's it and I'm not sharing. You want to be a miserable person. You know what that's called? That's called the Grinch, the stole Christmas. He doesn't celebrate giving. But I, how many want the joy of giving in your life? I want joy. God says, I love a cheerful giver. There's a supernatural release of joy, God's joy, in your life when you become a giver. Um, giving also blesses others by meeting their needs. Uh, and that, we do that all the time. But look at this scripture in 2 Corinthians 9, 11. It says, when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. So what happens, we give and then we take it to those who need them. I'm going to give you an example. When we went to Uganda, we have an orphanage in Uganda. Now, this orphanage is very unique. Uh, it's unique in this, that that orphanage went through some serious, really tragedy right around a year before we took over the orphanage. Um, there were some men that came in from the Congo, and they went to that orphanage before we took it over, um, and they, put all, they, they drugged all the kids to sleep. Um, and they started raping the, li the little girls. One of the little boys woke up out of, out of, out of the, the, the drugs that they used to put him to sleep. And when he woke up, they, they beat him so bad they knocked out all his teeth. So the little girls were raped. 
the little boy's teeth were all knocked out. Um, and then they killed the, the driver, their, their, one of the workers in that home. Since that happened, um, the, the government came down on the home and the people that were in charge of the home, they could, they, there was so much turmoil. They had to hire police officers and guards to be at, at the house. The expenses got so high that the church that was actually, that started this orphanage, they couldn't keep it going. They went to a major organization, a major church organization, has thousands of churches, and they said, please help us with this orphanage, and they got turned down. Everywhere they went, they, they got turned down. As a matter of fact, this orphanage was going to be without support. But this is what happened. They were, he kept trying to find someone that would help him with the orphanage because it does cost a lot of money to take care of those orphans. We, we, we clothe them. We feed them every day. We have, to, we have the house. We have the electricity. Um, and we also have to pay for every one of their schools it's because it's not like public schools. They, there's a charge for every kid. Every kid we take in costs a lot of money. So there wasn't any church that wanted it, but this is what they heard. They heard the, the pastor was looking. He says, there's a church that might take it. And they mentioned the way World Outreach. So they, they heard about our church. They said, that church might do it. So they came to us as soon as I heard of the deploy that he was in and, and I heard about the kids, that the orphanage, and I heard about the church. I go, we'll do it. And I understand, we're saying yes before we got the money. But it doesn't matter. We're going to say yes because we believe that God is saying yes. And sometimes you got to say yes before you have it. So we did. And, and in that home... After I was in that church, uh, I, I went over there, and after church, there was a little boy that came up to me after that church service. A little boy came up to me, and he was from the streets. Imagine being 11, 12 years old, being on the streets, and not know where your next meal's coming. You're hungry, um, and you have no parents. You have no protection. And on those streets in Africa, there's drug addiction, prostitution, abuse. These kids are being abused. They're being drawn into gang gangs and this little boy has been living on the street for a while he comes to church that day when I was there and he he waits for me at the my car and he and he says I'm I'm hungry and I go okay and he goes I have nothing to eat I go where do you live he goes I live on the streets I have I'm hungry I go come with us so he came with us and we took him to our hotel and this is what he ordered he ordered a hamburger he don't even know what a hamburger is. He didn't know how to eat it. He's never eaten a hamburger. And he, he has his stomach because he doesn't eat much. He ate a little bit and then he just saved the rest. But the good news was not only did we feed him a hamburger, which that would be a small feat. We took him to our hotel. We put him in that orphanage. And he's in that orphanage. Not right now, if you go over there, he's there right now. He's no longer homeless. He has now a family that lives in the United States of America that support him, that love him, that are taking care of him. The next Sunday, I saw that little boy, and that little boy was dancing. He was singing. He was jumping. He was giving thanks to God. Because when we give, not only does it bless us, it blesses them. And they start singing to God, God saved me from the streets. And it wouldn't have happened if there was no giving. So our giving does that. And now we have a warehouse that we're feeding, you know, we feed thousands and thousands of meals a year, give over a million pounds of food. We have an orphanage in Uganda. We got an orphanage in Kenya. We have a school in Kenya. And we're talking about rescuing children that have no kids. These kids are abandoned. We're taking little babies that have been just left on the streets and we're putting them in our homes and they're being brought up in our homes and we're letting them know that God hasn't forgotten about you. There's a group of people that are saying, I'm not just living for me. I'm living to give a break to somebody else. Give God some praise because he's a good God and we can participate in this. So we do that. We got men's homes, women's homes. We're, we're opening up our, 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 our women's home in Arizona. I just walked through it. It has like a seven-bedroom home. There's going to be ladies that right now are addicted to drugs. They, need, they have no way out. They've been abused by and been in abusive relationships, and they have no family. But we're going to be their family. They're going into that home, and we're going to hear testimonies from Arizona, how lives are changed, and mamas are going to get their kids back. They're going to be restored because that's what God does with some givers that's joy for them but it's joy for us too I love it 
Now, given, second thing about given, given our tithes and first fruit offerings teaches us to put God first. Now, like, this, is, this is one of those things that until you're a giver, you're going to be struggling with who's first in your life. One, I think one of the biggest struggles we have is giving. Like we could do a lot of things. We could go to church. We could even maybe serve in a ministry. But it doesn't mean that God's still number one in your life. It's when you finally say, okay, God, I'll give you my finances. I'm going to put you first in my money. And this is what happens when you put God first with your money. This is what you're saying. God's really first. He's really first. You're giving, you cannot give your money without giving your heart. And this is what God is saying. I want to be first in your life. Look what the Bible says here in Deuteronomy 14, 23. It says, bring the tithe. This is God telling us before the Lord your God at, at the place he shall choose as his sanctuary. Bring it to the church. That's all it means. And the back part of scripture and the firstborn. And basically first part, the first fruit of your flocks and herds. The purpose of tithing, look at the purpose, is to teach you always to put God first in your lives. This is the idea. If you could put God first in your, by giving your first 10% to the Lord, this is what you're saying. God is first in my life. And this is what happens when God is first in your life. He can now lead your life. Now, if God's first in your life, that means he leads your decisions. And when God is leading your life, this is what he leads you. He leads you to fulfill purpose. He leads you to victory. He leads you to success. He leads you to breakthrough. See, some of us right now, you're struggling because you don't have the right leader over your life. And God is saying, stop trying to do this on your own. Put me first so I could get you my blessings. If I could lead you to give you me, put me first in your finances, in your life, this is what I'll do. I'll lead the rest of your life. I'll lead you in your marriage. I'll lead you in your business. I'll lead you with your kids. Come on. I'll lead you, I'll lead you in every decision you make. And when I lead you, I lead you to prosperity. I lead you to success. I lead you to fulfillment of your dreams. I'll lead you to emotional health. I'll lead you to freedom. Is there anybody here that's leadable and saying, God, you're first? And if he's not, this is a good time to make that decision early in the year. So tithing teaches us to put God First, teach, let's put God who? First, okay, all right. Number three, God commands us not to withhold giving him our tithes and first fruits. Um, in Exodus twenty two twenty nine, 29, it says, thou shalt not delay to pay thy tithes and thy first fruits. Like, don't delay it. In another version, it says this, do not hold back your offering from the first of your harvest. Give me the first um, grain that you harvest. Give me the first wine that you make. Also, you must give me your firstborn. Look what it says in the scripture. Give me the first, give me the first, give me the first. And this is what happens when you give him the first. This is what you're saying. You're first. So what's the tithe? It's the first 10%. Now, you do not give God your extra if you have enough. You put God first. And this is what God promises. If you put me first, I'll add everything to you. What he's saying, stop trusting in your limited assets, your limited wisdom, your, li your, your limited power. Why don't you trust in me? Put me first. And when you put me first, you have access to my riches. You have access to my wisdom. You have access to my strength. You have access to my vision. This is the truth. He says, seek me first and I'll add everything to you. I'll supply all of you need according to, your, to my riches and glory. How many believe that if we put him first? He'll give us everything he has. Somebody, he'll give us everything he has. He just put me first. Now, remember, God's not telling you to put him first because he just wants to be first. He's saying, put me first so I can lead, direct you, and bless you. Soon as you put me first, there's going to be a blessing I'm going to release upon your life. Or blessings, I'm going to release. We'll get to that in a minute, what they are. So what is the first fruit offering? It is one of three types of offerings that we can give to the Lord. One of three types. In Nehemiah 12, 44, it says, And the same time some were appointed over the rooms of the storehouse for the offerings, offerings, the first fruits and the tithe, to gather into them, to gather into them from the fields of the city. So he said, there's three, there was people assigned to gather the harvest and bring them into storehouses. Now, now back in those days, they're, they're bringing in harvest from fields. So it could be grain, it could, of course, corn. But they were gathering fruit, but mostly grain and wheat, all those things that can be stored. And why would they have a storehouse? They'd have a storehouse because not everybody 
had a field. There were people that didn't have fields and they were hungry in the city and they could go to the storehouse or they could go to the church and they could get a meal to eat. Thank God for those that gave the first fruits because there was more than enough in the storehouse so no one went hungry. In these cities, there was nobody starving. There was no such thing as starvation because there was an order. He goes, I bless you. You bring the first fruits. We'll have a storehouse and we'll take care of everybody. Everybody's going to eat. How many believe that's a good idea? Everybody's going to eat. No one's going to go to bed hungry. And, of course, we have storehouses here in our church. Our warehouse is full of food. We have trucks come in every single week. They put food in our storehouses. And we, we give out a million pounds of food, uh, hundreds of thousands of, of meals that we, we give out and bags that we give out every single year. Why do we do that? There's hungry people in our city. But thank God nobody needs to starve in San Bernardino because there is a storehouse. And we have a storehouse because of given moments like this. Number two, it is an offer. Well, let's talk about first fruit in a second. Um, the, the word first fruit is, is, is it's a Hebrew root word, reshith. Say with me, reshith. You learned you learn some Hebrew here today. First in place and time. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an offering that's made first in place and time at the beginning. So that's why we do it at the beginning of the year. We give this offering, a special offering that's different than a tithe and different than a regular offering at the beginning. Or it's leading. It's the leading. Or, or it says it's the most important the chief, the, the above others in rank, authority and power, the highest rank, the first hole. Now, what he's saying is the tithe is important. A regular offering as God leads is important. But this is the most important one is the first fruit offering. This one has the most power because it sets the pace for all the rest of the offerings you'll ever get. The Bible says that the, the first fruit offering is the root. Someone say the root. It's the root. That means when the root is healthy and the root is blessed, every branch is blessed. So what God is saying, give me a portion of your first increase as an offering to me. Give me the root. I will bless it. And if I bless the root, every branch, whether it's your family, whether, come on, it's your health, whether it's your business, whether whatever it is, I'm going to start right now flowing from the root all the way through. And this doesn't happen. If the root root is holy. If the root is blessed, every branch is blessed. God is saying, this is really an important offering because it's your root. You guys got that? All right, number two. It is an offering that we bring to the house of the Lord at the beginning of the year. So when do we bring it? At the beginning of the year. Nehemiah 10, 35. I'm going to give you a background here. Um, this, is, this is a story. Uh, these people are responding. They're giving this first fruit offering really for, and, and they're excited to do this. It's the first fruit offering that they've ever done in 140 years. This is what happened. They were serving God, and, and they were serving God, but this is what happened. They got comfortable in the prosperity. So they got so comfortable that they said, man, we don't need God, and they started living a life without God. They stopped tithing, they stopped giving, and when they stopped tithing and giving, this is what they started doing. They started worshiping the false gods, of their area. And, th and the next step thing that would happen is they, they were always winning battles as a country, as a nation. Now they didn't have the backup of the Lord, the protection of the Lord. And the next battles that they went into, they started losing. Back in those days, a healthy city had walls around the city. The strength of a city was the strength of the walls. If the walls were torn down, that, that meant that the enemy could come in and without any protection, rape, and pillage, and steal. So even if they tried to produce a harvest in their fields, the raiders would come in, not the, L, not the Las Vegas raiders, the other raiders. They would come in, and they would take all the harvest. So they were, they were always on the point of starvation. Their women were being raped. Their families were being sold off as slaves. And this is a crazy thing. 140 years, nothing changed. Until there was a man named Nehemiah, he asked about, how's Jerusalem doing? He had some family members in Jerusalem, and he was living in a palace at that time. But he had family in Jerusalem, and he asked somebody that came from Jerusalem, how's Jerusalem doing? He goes, it's horrible. They're being raped. They're being pillaged. It's destitute. It's complete poverty. And Nehemiah said, okay, I'm going to do something about it. 
See, all it takes is for one person to become unselfish and say, it doesn't matter. I'm willing to go into that hood. I'm willing to go into that mess. I'm willing to go into those ravaged areas. I'm willing to face the enemy and help a people come back and be restored. So he went. And when he, when he went there, he started a rebuilding campaign. And this is what happened. What took, what couldn't be done in 140 years. Nehemiah rebuilt the walls of that city, rebuilt the city, gave them dignity again, and it happened in just 52 days. This is what God's ready to do. When you begin to put him first, where you couldn't get done your whole life, God's going to get done in a short period of time. You might think, I don't think that this can be turned around. My family's been like this from generation to generation to generation. And God says, it don't matter how long it's been. There's a new chief in town. There's a new leader. Put me in charge of everything and I'll get done what you couldn't get done in a lifetime, in a short period of time. And people will know, I know it wasn't you. You had an intervention. Does anybody need a God intervention to restore what's been broken? I know you made some bad decisions, but you don't have to stay there. You got to finally make, make up your mind. I did mess up, but it's time to rebuild. It's time to get restored. It's time for me to get some victories back. I'm tired of losing. I'm tired of being tormented. I'm tired of the depression. I'm tired of the cycles of destruction. Is there anybody that's tired of it and said, this is my season. This is my year for a dramatic breakthrough and turnaround. God do it. So now it's so important for you to know God's bigger than your dumb mistakes. And we've all done dumb things. Amen. Come on. I just thank God. God, thank you for saving me. <laughs> I've, been, I've been dumb. But God can restore all of us. Isn't that good? Amen. He's one of my friends right there. He said, he's saving me too. <laughs> exactly. But look at this. Um, after they got this, they, they had a meeting after the walls were restored. And after they have a meeting, the leaders come in and say, look, man, we got to put God first again. And one of the ways we start need to put God first is now we're getting some harvest that we could keep. Let's make sure when we get our first fruit harvest that we give a big portion to the Lord to let him know we're so grateful we give you credit for what you've done. We thank you for rebuilding our lives. We thank you for giving us a future. And the people responded with this, with enthusiasm. Yes, they said, we promise, as we said, to bring the first part of every harvest to the Lord's temple year after year. We'll never let that happen again. We'll never let sight, lose sight of God and who's our provider and who's the one that protected us and who's the one that gives us victory. And they said from year after year after year, we'll get back to the ordinances and put God first and bring our first fruit offering. Isn't that great? Number three, the first fruit offering is an act of worship. So this offering is you're actually worshiping God. In Deuteronomy 26, 10, it says, and now behold, I have brought the first fruits of the, of the land. And in the last part of scripture, set it before the Lord thy God and worship before the, the Lord thy God. See, I give this first fruits, but I, I want you to understand I'm worshiping. And you know what worshiping is? Is acknowledging and magnifying who your God is. Worshiping is, is giving thanks. It's also giving credit. Don't forget where you came from. Don't, don't ever get to the point that you become comfortable in what God has done, that you've lost your gratitude. You know, first of all, you need to thank God that you're even here, that you're alive, that you can breathe, that you got sight. That even if you messed up, that there, you could still have some hope. You could have a future. Thank God that Jesus died for your sins and he rose from the dead and he'll forgive you of your sins and give you a gift of eternal life. Thank God that, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. That's all it is. I thank you. But you don't say, I thank you without a gift. Look what the scripture says here. Giving our first fruits honors God. And Proverbs 3, 9 says, honor the Lord with your possessions. That word possessions, what is that? Wealth and finances. And with the first fruits, and with the first fruits of all your increase. Because as, as you, at the beginning of the year, let's say you start a business. At the beginning of your business, give your business to the Lord. Well, how do I give my business to the Lord? It's more than a prayer. It's an investment. So God, I thank you for this business. I'm going to give you the first fruits. So this is what you're doing. You're giving your best of your first 
And you say, I put it in your hands. And what you're saying is, multiply this. And God is saying, give me something to multiply. Give me something to bless. Give me some crown. I could turn five loaves and two fish and feed 5,000 people, but you got to just give me your five loaves and you two fish. And what I'm saying is you start a business, put me first in that business by giving me a first fruit offering. And this is what you're doing. You're dedicating your business to me. And when you dedicate your business to me, it's my responsibility to help you succeed now. And why do we give our best? Because we reap what we sow. If we give our best... God gives us the best. If we give something that's invaluable, don't expect some big breakthroughs in your life because it meant nothing to you. And if it means nothing to you, it means nothing to God because your heart has to be in it. You guys understand that? So it's that honor. Honor means, honor means to worship, adore, acknowledge, give thanks, give credit, show high respect. So when we're giving our first fruit offering, we're giving him credit for saving us restoring us, setting us free, providing for us, giving us the gift of eternal life in the Holy Spirit, for sending his only son, Jesus, to die for our sins, giving us total victory over sin, the devil and every trial. I'm telling you, when Jesus died and resurrected from the dead, Jesus said this, I've come to destroy the works of the devil. You know what that means? That there's no sin that should have power over you that you can be not be set free from. Who the son says free is free indeed. There's no devil you need to fear because the victory that Jesus won over the devil, he's given it to you. Come on, thank God. God, that the enemy that you're facing has been defeated. Can anybody give thanks for what Jesus has done? He'll do it now. He'll do it for your family. He'll do it for your kids. I love it. Because what Jesus did, I can do. Why? Because the same spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead and was upon Jesus is the same Holy Spirit that you and I as a believer receive. Thank God for the Holy Spirit because that makes you, it makes you get in a position of unlimited power. I can do all things through Christ. With God, all things are possible. Amen. So the first fruit, just honor God. Just give him some credit. So with God, does God need credit? Does he, does he need credit? Like, does he have an ego? Needs credit? No, he don't need credit. You need to give him credit. Because if you don't acknowledge your source, he can't help you. It, what he's saying, don't forget who I am. It's not for me. It's for you. So every time I give my tithe, I'm just saying, thank you, Lord. You've been so good. Because I already know who I, to, who I am without the Lord. Without the Lord, I can't have a wife and kids. Without the Lord, I might be dead already. Without the Lord, I'll probably be in prison. Without, without the Lord, I'd be sick in the head. Come on. Without the Lord, I'd be depressed. Without the Lord, I'd be hopeless. Without the Lord, I have no eternal life. Without the Lord, I have no love. Without the Lord, I have no purpose. I already know who I am without the Lord. That's why I come and I bring my tithes and offerings and first fruits with some praise because I'm grateful for what God has done. I'm not only grateful for what he's done, I'm grateful for what he's going to do. Let's just set the pattern up right now. Father, you bless me, I praise you. You bless me, I praise you. And he goes, okay, then I bless you back. Okay, so let's end it with this section. What are the three major blessings that are activated through our giving of our first fruit offering? Now, if you know these blessings, um, understand, no one has to give anything. Who oh, they were trying to make me give. No one's trying to make you give. <laughs> I'm just showing you what the Bible says. And I'm going to show you the blessings. Now, if you want the blessings, then activate them. Now, but don't get mad that you don't have these blessings if you don't have the faith to even activate them. That's up to you. Right? Mom, don't tell me what to do. Look, bro, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm trying to help you, knucklehead. You say, I'm trying to control your life? I'm not trying to control your life. I'm trying to lead your wife. What life? Do you think it benefits me to get in this argument every five minutes? It don't benefit me. I'm trying to benefit you. I've been where you're at. I've made the decision that you're making. It ruined my life. And I'm telling you, if it ruined my life, stop going in that direction. Learn from my mistakes. Knuckle, head. Well, mom, you made your mistakes. I want to make my mistakes. Come over here. Let me slap you. 
Oh, call the police. Call the police and the, and the Air Force and the Marines. Because right now you're in my house and we're going to, come on, we're going to deal with this rebellion because I'm going to, see, if I don't deal with you, come on, the prisons will deal with you. There's somebody that has to tell you this is the right way to live and this is the wrong way to live. I love you. Listen. We're not talking about abuse. Stop it. We're talking about correction with consequences. I mean, we got we to gotta become parents again. Your job is not to be just their best friend. Your job is to be the, the regulator. This is how it goes. And this is what's right. And this is what's wrong. And as long as you're in this house, I'm not going to let you live however you want to live. Because this is my house. And we have order. And this is a kingdom house. And we're going to operate that way. I love you. And I guarantee you that there's going to be a day that you're going to thank God I was strict with you. Because you're going to be saying, my parents are strict. And you're going to be saying, I thank God. Because I could have gotten a whole bunch of mess. Don't you thank, don't you praise God that God has order. That he directs you. That he shows you. Show me, Jesus. All right, now, blessing number one. Blessing number one. These are three major blessings that are activated through giving our first fruit offering. Blessing number one, a blessing to rest on our homes. Ezekiel 44, 30 says, the best of all the first fruits of any kind, to cause a blessing to rest on your house. Amazing. So the word blessing means peace to rest in your home, prosperity to rest in your home, increase, success, praise, and the joy of the Lord in your home. This is what he said. I want, I want blessing to be in your home, not curses in your home. So either curses are resting on your home or blessings are resting in your home. When curses are resting in your home, there's no peace. There's only fighting. There's only arguing. And almost that you sense there's a demonic spirit there. It seems like nothing advances. You go home, it's not, there's no peace there. You don't get creativity there. You don't get good ideas there. You don't get encounters with God there. And, and so you come to church and God says, that's good you came to church. But God is saying, let's take home a take home meal. And God is saying, what you got here, you could have in your house. The reason you feel the presence of God here and you feel the peace of God here and the tormented spirits are letting you alone here because you're in a different atmosphere. You're in an atmosphere where God is number one. You're in an atmosphere where God is worship. And God is saying, what's here is supposed to be in your house does anybody want God to come to your house and stay in your house and demons to leave and God says I'll put my blessing in your house and it will rest there rest the word rest means this it means this never depart settle down and remain the word bless means peace prosperity so it gets peace will be in the house you want your house to be full of the presence of God some of your kids they just need more presence of God in your home. They don't, they don't need another, they don't need some other, they don't need some more Jordans. They don't, need, they don't need another video game. What they need is the presence of God. And you know what that means? If, if you're going to have the presence of God in your home, then you're going to have to put God first. And one of the ways you can activate that right now is say, I'm going to give a first fruit offering and I'm going to activate this blessing because I want God's blessing to be in my home. And I don't want it just to visit. I want it to live there. I want the presence of God to be so strong in my house that devils don't even want to get there. They be there. They want to get out of this house. They're being tormented. Come on. There's some spirits that are on your kids and they're comfortable in your home. And God is saying, if you'll just make me first in your home, your kids and those spirits of rebellion that they're dealing with, they're going to have to leave because my presence is there and where there's light, darkness has to flee. One more praise to God. Come on, I'm receiving this. Is anybody receiving? Blessing number two. Oh, be on your house. So blessing number one, it will rest on your home. That's your family, your descendants, your household, your children, and your home. Not, this is what's going to happen. God will even fix your plumbing for you. I mean, even if you have the money to fix it or whatever, but I guarantee you, things are, your house is going to look better. God says, I'm going to restore everything. Your house, your, your landscape, I'm going to get it all together. We're going to start painting the eaves because when I start fixing, it shows on the outside too. Everything's going to start getting fixed when I fix you on the inside. Everything else that's destroyed on the outside, it's going to be fixed too. But God is saying, I want to be there. I want to get this back in order. Amen. Number two, 
God will crown all your efforts with success. I love that. You mean guaranteed success? Look what it says. You should memorize this scripture. Proverbs 3, 6. In everything you do, put God first. In everything you do, what? In your marriage, in your workplace, in your vacation, when you go to Las Vegas, the entertainment you're taking in, the conversations that you have, what you let your body do, say, no, 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 I'm going to put God first. I don't do whatever I want to do with my body anymore. This mouth belongs to God. So whatever words are coming out of my mouth have to be, have to be approved by God. So everything I do, I put God first. And I remember I told the men this, 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 this story that me and Lisa, when we were going out, I made a decision that we were going to save ourselves sexually until we got married. It wasn't that I wasn't attracted to Lisa, but I had to put God first. I was saying, Lisa, I love you, but I love God more. Pleasure, I love you, but I love God more. I mean, mean, you know you love pleasure. But God says, do you love pleasure more than me? There has to be a time in your life that you deny your pleasure and you deny your lust and you deny your your sexual activity and say this, no, uh in the name of, I'll wait till I get married, but I'm saving myself because I serve a God that, that, that he knows best. If I can let him lead me before I get married, I'll have his blessing on my marriage. So now we've been married 34 years and I got this testimony that our marriage is better than it was when we first started. I love her more than I ever loved her. We're better friends than we've ever been. And I'll tell you why. Because where God is first, he's directing, he's ruling, and his presence causes increase and growth. Don't get mad if it's not working. Just change your direction. Change your leader. Put God first. Amen? So, blessing number two. God will crown all your efforts. In everything you do, put God first. And he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. This is crazy. He's saying, when you put me first, everything that you do, I will make sure it succeeds. Is that possible? I'm telling you, it's possible. I live this. There's nothing that we do that doesn't succeed. I don't care how crazy it is. It succeeds. And I, the only thing I need to do is just put God first. Some of you guys are wondering, should I do this? Should I do that? No, just do this. Put God first. And when you put God first, God's going to begin to direct you. And you're going to start making decisions that are aligned with God's will for your life. And everything that you put effort in, as long as God is first, will succeed. How many would like to have guaranteed success? How about we like this? One win after another 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 win. One breakthrough after another breakthrough. One level to the next level to the next level to the next level to the next level. That's my pattern because me, as I'm living for God, my life winds upward. It doesn't go downward. This is what happens. You start getting more and more confidence in your God as you start seeing him give you victories. Just put God first. Worship him. You know, David was a good example of that. You know, you know we know that he killed, a, he killed a giant. But before he ever killed a giant, he was a worshiper putting God first. While he was in the backwoods with his little sheep, he was praising God, worshiping God, thinking about God, meditating on God. God was first. So when a, when a lion came to try to take his sheep, he goes, nah, I know who my God is. God's, God is more powerful than the lion. Bear, bear came, he goes, nah, nah. I'm not no regular shepherd that runs under pressure because I know who my God is. And I see with God, he's directing my paths and he it crowns my efforts with success. I already know how this is going to turn out. You're going to die. I'm, you're going to take one of my sheep. A matter of fact, I'm going to kill you. And the Bible says he killed the bear. He killed the lion. And then he goes, when he saw a giant, he goes, you're the same thing. You're like a little bigger version of these lions and bears, but I'm going to take you out too because I'm, God is first in my life. And if God is first in my life, he crowns all my efforts with victory and success. Is there anybody this year ready to start winning with Jesus? Jesus Christ, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens me. All right, blessing number three. An overflow of provision and Holy Spirit power. In Proverbs 3, 9, it says, honor the Lord with your possessions and the first fruit of your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. God commands us to 
give him the first fruits so that he can fill our barns with plenty. The word barns just means storehouses. This is what God is saying. You're supposed to be a storehouse of abundant supplies, both physically and spiritually. God wants the church and his people to be distribution centers of his love, his freedom, his hope, his peace, his wisdom, his joy, his encouragement, his salvation, the good news, food, clothing, housing, refuge, restoration, care, training, the word, healing, counseling, discipling. This is what I'm saying. I'm going to fill your house. I'm going to fill your life with plenty. You're going to have not just enough. Because I didn't call you to survive. I called you to thrive. And I want you to have plenty. And there's a reason I want you to have more than enough. Because I want you to have enough for you. And then I want you to have some overflow to bless somebody else. God is saying, I want you to be a distribution center of all my resources. How many are ready to say, God, use me. Fill me now. God, let's go. He goes, okay. So this is what I want you to do. Give the first fruits so that I will fill your life with plenty. I want you to have plenty left over to share with others. Have you ever thought that plenty is part of your future? Now understand, some people say, well, is this a prosperity message? No, this is a message, this is what it is. It's God's word. He said it. If you put me first, I want to take you to a place that you have overflow because there's some people that need to be blessed and they're going to be blessed through my people. So what I do is I get it to you and I get it through you and I'll keep getting it to you and keep getting it through you. And this is what's going to happen. The patterns are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. As you're faithful with little, I'm going to give you more. I'm going to give you more so you could be a bigger blessing. Does anybody want to be a bigger blessing? You want to get away from the philosophy, me, myself, and I. I say, nah, that's not me anymore. And we'll end it with this. Vats overflowing with new wine. Someone's like saying, that's my language now. <laughs> Give me some wine. Um, wine, vats were, uh, vats were places where, 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 where grapes were crushed. So it's pressing, and they pressed the grapes and they would create wine. Um, new wine um, in the, in, represents God's spirit. It represents the Holy Spirit. It also represents intoxication. It means getting drunk. So God is saying, I want to get you drunk. Now, getting drunk means this. It means that you're under the influence. So when you're under the influence of alcohol, you're drunk with stupidity. Picking fights with a guy twice your size. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. You know, you know where I'm from? You don't even know me, huh? <laughs> Stupidity. Right? But when you're under the influence, you're under the influence of divine. And this is what it's saying. When you're under the influence of my spirit, I take over your mind with my thoughts. I take over your, come on, your perspective with my perspective. I take over your vision with my vision. I take over your creativity with my creativity. I take over your power, your weakness with my strength. This is what God is saying. I want to intoxicate you and I want you to be under my influence all year long. So even under pressure, it's not going to destroy you. The pressure is only going to fill you with more power. God is saying the pressure situations, the trials that you're going through, the difficulties that you'll face in 2020. Before, they won't do nothing for you in a bad way. They're going to promote you. They're going to take you to new wine, to new levels. Come on, to new breakthroughs, to new victories, and to new encounters with the Lord. Jesus saying this year, 2024, as you put me first, you're not going to barely make it anymore. You're going to be intoxicated with my spirit, and you're going to start getting results like Jesus got. Is there anybody ready to walk in miracle territory, accomplish more than you've ever accomplished, and and bring in a harvest bigger than you've ever experienced. But let's give God some praise. God is good. Everybody online. Let's all stand up. No one leave. We're going to leave in one minute. Hallelujah. Is it raining outside? Not yet. Oh, I don't know what it is. Don't worry about it. It's not raining in here. Okay, we're going we're gonna to do this. Let's this just honor this moment. This is the first fruit moment. And, and I say again, no one has to do it. Um, no one has to give, you know, but this idea, don't expect these blessings to rest on your home. Don't, don't expect, because these are activated, God to crown all your efforts with success. 
And don't expect for an overflow of God's provision and Holy Spirit power in your home and your life. Because what you're saying is, I'll do it on my own. And, and I would say this, you could succeed on your own, but it won't be good success. The Bible says that God gives success with no sorrow. The success that God wants to give you doesn't just last a lifetime, a month. It lasts for eternity. You're going to be living purpose. You're going to, be, you're going to have some grat gratification. There's nothing like being in the presence of God and doing his will. It'll satisfy you like nothing can satisfy you. We, we, we know this Rolling Stones, they sang it, I can't get no satisfaction. And it was an anthem of the age that I've got the drugs, I got the women, I got everything that the world has to offer. And the truth is, I'm going to tell you my testimony, I'm not satisfied. There's only one that could satisfy you and make you host Jesus. So we're going to have an opportunity to put him first in a practical way. That's all. It's just a practical way by bringing a first fruit offering. Now, there's three ways to give a first fruit offering. I'll just mention them. One is give 300, we've been doing this, $366 a dollar for every day. And I give that offering. It represents a seed in every day of the year. If you have a seed in every day, then every day you could expect a harvest every day. I already planted a seed in that day, that day, that day. So I wake up in the morning. Don't forget that you gave the offering. I'm expecting a harvest. It could be a harvest of salvation, a harvest of an idea, a harvest of who knows what God's going to give you. I, I talked to a lady this week, and, and she was working for a company, and then God gave her an idea to... to start a company. It was hard for her to step out. She was a single mother with three kids. And she goes, I just knew God was telling me to do it. And I stepped out in faith. And now she has a thriving 10-year business. She's going to be hiring her children pretty soon that are, that are a little bigger now. And she started another business. And it was just an idea that God gave her. And I'm telling you, when God begins to guide you, he's going to guide you to bigger, a bigger life, bigger thoughts, and bigger results. Some of us are thinking too small. And I'll tell you why. The enemy wants you to think small. He wants you to think about your problems and just think about that. And makes you, wants to give you an I can't mentality. So we're going to give. So some people are going to give 366. For some people, that's too much. And for some people, it's too little. So, so some of you need to add a zero to that or two zeros to that because God has blessed you like that. Um, number two, give the first hole. That means your first, it could be your first day's wage. It could be your first week's wage, your first month's wage, your first commission or substantial amount. That's one way to do it. Number three, everyone can participate. Give the very best you can. That's all. All I'm saying is participate and give a first fruit offering. And be intentional about your future. Unlock. There's keys that are going to be unlocked. And you're going to go home with a blessing resting on your home, number one. You're going to go home with God's, your, your number one. And he goes, I'm going to begin to direct you. I'm going to begin to lead you to success. Now all your efforts are going to turn into something. Your visions will come to pass. And, and you're going to see the next thing is you're going to start seeing the overflow of God's provision and also his Holy Spirit in your life. Someone says, needs to hear from God. You need, you need a fresh encounter with God. You need to be able to go to sleep again and just have some peace. Like, <sighs> is there anybody ready to exhale today? I <sighs> tired give your life to jesus give a first fruit offering also give it in exodus 23 19 it says as you harvest your cross bring the very best of the first harvest to the house of the lord your god that's all give your very best that's all and that's all you're going to do give my very best maybe you give 366 maybe you'll give another number whatever god puts in your heart but i would i would just say this as you fill this out that's what i want you to do put if you have a word of the year put it down here and you're is, and I'm believing for has someone to get saved. So just, I always say, follow the full instructions so you can get the full results. That's all. And then what I want you to do is take the offering. Even if you give online, by faith, put it in one of these boxes. There's boxes here. There's boxes in the back. By faith. Even if, if there's nothing in here where you gave online, just put it in there. Put your name on there. Put the name. And we're going to believe that as you're doing this, you plant a seed. And God sees your faith. And he's, you have attached it to a soul. I really believe that God is hearing your prayer because he wants those people saved. He just needed someone to pray with them and actually step out for them. So we're going to pray right now. We're going to give our first fruit offerings. You could come and bring it here and put it in, in this key, this one of these boxes of that kiosk, or there's some in the back. But everybody just give. You could give online. It's a matter I'm in a rush. I can't do that. We'll just give online. And then maybe, you know, during this week on the impartation, be here early, guys. 
Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's going to be crazy. We've got people traveling from all over the United States coming here. I want you in this building first. We're going to have overflow everywhere, but get here early so we, so we can make sure we get you a seat, right? Father, we lift up our first fruit offering, Lord. This is one of the ways that we can show you your first in our lives. This is more than an offering. This is an act, Father, of worship. And Father, every year we say, God, we're going to give you an offering that means something to us at the beginning of the year. And as we do this, this is our root. It's going to bless every branch in our lives. Multiply what we give you, Father, over and over and over. Make this the DNA of what you multiply. Everyone that can give, Father, today, bless them, Lord. And those that right now have no income coming in, I thank you, Lord. You give them seed. You open doors. You give them jobs. Father, open the door for finances to come their way too. So they can meet their needs. You can meet their needs and also be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go ahead. We're going to dismiss right now. Um, we're, just come forward with your first fruit. Drop it off in one of these. I'll be up here just saying hi to you guys. Or right in the back there's some. But just we're releasing right now. Just everybody just come up. There we go. Put it right here. Thank you guys. The worship team singing. And God bless you. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Uh, Thursday night, 7 o'clock. Friday night, 7 o'clock. You need anything, please come up. We'd love to pray with you.